Good morning, YouTube. Today, I want to show you my new supercar. It's way down there. So, are you recording all of the nefarious activities? If you're new to the channel, my name is Dan, and this is my garage, and that is my 1965 Ford GT40 that is actually a continuation done by Superformance licensed by Saphir. So it's not actually a GT40, but it is actually a GT40. So it's not one of the original GT40s that was made by Ford back in the 60s, but it's a continuation series, so it does have a GT40 VIN number and all that stuff, and it's built to their specifications and all that sort of stuff. It has a certification and blah, 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 blah. Anyway, it's a Ford GT40, basically. And it's absolutely ridiculous. And I'm gonna show you all about it and take you out for a ride in it. And we will talk about this car and why I decided to get a Ford instead of a Ferrari. So if you didn't know much about me, I actually grew up in Michigan and I had most of my childhood years yearning for muscle cars. I loved the Chevelle, the Cutlass, the Nova. I've had all of those cars, Mustangs, all the cool stuff of the 60s. And of course, I had a sweet spot in my heart for the GT40. But I never really thought I could get one because, well, you know, the originals are just ridiculously expensive. And I kind of thought that the kit car ones are kind of junky. You know, I felt like I don't want a kit car. I want an actually manufactured proper car. After my 575 sold, I was looking for a new toy car and a new fun thing to play with and also something I can hopefully make some money with. While we were out in Monterey Car Week, I saw a GT40 that looked just incredible, and I thought, you know, maybe they should try something else, try something that's not a Ferrari. And one thing that came up in my logic on thinking about this was, I'm in a very weird position, and this is gonna sound horribly facetious, but it just it is what it is. I get to drive Ferraris all the time through my dealership. I've driven literally hundreds of Ferraris at this point, and I'm not saying I'm bored with Ferraris in any way, believe me, they are extraordinarily exciting. I love Ferraris, they are definitely my favorite brand. But I thought I'd try something different. And I just felt like this could fill that void, fill that need that I have for that muscle car feeling, that big American V8 just thumping along the road with the big old cam and all that stuff and something very analog, yet at the same time, just stunningly beautiful and it actually has handling and brakes. Oh my God. Something that the muscle cars really kind of didn't have back then. Well, this kind of fit the bill. It came up and uh, it's just glorious. Let's walk through some of the things about this car that make it special. And like I said, over the next few videos, we'll do some more discussions about it, including the crazy story behind getting the car actually here. And also why this is actually not the first GT40 that I had a deal for. The other one fell through. So stay tuned for all that. Like, share, and subscribe. Hit the notification bell and check out our website, normalguyssupercar.com and NG Supercars. There you can buy parts, services, and cars through our dealership. We do appreciate your guys' support. So first of all, I felt like if you're going to get a GT40, it needs to be in the Golf livery. Now I know that some people are gonna say, this isn't the Golf livery. Well, actually, this is technically the first Golf color scheme. The darker blue was actually First, the lighter blue came later. Of course, it has number six because, you know, the golf car had number six. It has the proper wheels. It's got the knockoffs. It's got all that stuff. So everything is what it should be to be a GT40, in my opinion. And of course, everything's analog. No computers, no nothing. you got the proper door handles. Some of them don't have these. They have like, you know, weird strings on the insides and all that stuff. No, it's got the actual latch right there. This one actually has air conditioning. Praise the Lord. That was one of my requirements is I can't have a car in Texas and not have air conditioning because that's just ridiculous. So you can see it's actually got Alcantara seating, Alcantara center console. We've got a five speed dog leg transmission and everything, like I said, is analog. So switches that control everything. Steering wheel, of course, pops off so you can actually get in and out. And one thing that this car has that is also a feature I really, really appreciated and wanted is it has an axle lifter. So that button right there will actually serve as an axle lifter and we can actually raise and lower this thing just a little bit because, well, if you look, this thing has basically no clearance. It's, uh, you yeah, know, I don't know, maybe two inches. That's all you get. So that's kind of a problem driving around when you actually have a city car that's, well, basically a race car that's turned into a city car. One other cool thing is everything's functional. All the scoops have a purpose. They do things. 
they actually like cool brakes or you know serve as intake for the engine so like this air inlet right here flows in and actually feeds the engine you've got some uh, brake ducts that go in here and actually cool the brakes you've got cooling ducts up in the front the NACA ducts all that sort of stuff is real both the fuel fillers actually are real you can fill the fuel tank on either side all those sorts of things that just make this a true GT40 and of course yes you have the fuel tanks right next to your sides one of the chores of this car is getting in and out this is not something that you're gonna take dates out on it is very cramped interior it is very well let's just say manly no power steering no power brakes clutch pedal is heavy the brake pedal is heavy the accelerator pedal is ridiculously heavy they must have something like 40 pound return springs or something on this carburetor because holy crap it takes so much effort to actually put this thing to the floor. We've even got the Dan Gurney bubble, so you can actually fit your head in here. Now, one thing is this is a left-hand drive, not a right-hand right -hand drive. I know that technically to be true to its originality, it would need to be a right-hand drive, but well, it's just practical to have a left-hand drive if you're living in the United States. I didn't really care that the shifter would be mounted in the center versus mounted on the, the right-hand side. That to me didn't really seem like a big deal. Sticking out back, you've got the adjustable spoiler and you've got the dual exhaust. Oh, and speaking of everything being proper, we've got a Roush 427 SR in here producing approximately 550 horsepower in a car that only weighs 2,300 pounds. Insane. So let's take a look at that glorious, glorious engine. We got pop off the releases and pull the pins. Oh, sweet mama, yes. We've got the 427 Ford made by Roush with about 550 horsepower. It does have a different carburetor, so this is not the one that came with the car. It's an AED carburetor, so it's a little bit better, flows a little bit more. We've got the bundle of snakes headers, and basically, well, that's the entire exhaust. It's just, that's it. You've got the five-speed manual transmission, adjustable coil suspension. You've got an auxiliary oil cooler that's actually added in this car. So normally the Mark 1s had a little bit of difficulty cooling the oil. This one has an aftermarket cooler. It's even got fans for it, so it can actually survive a little better. So it has a couple of modern little things just to make it a little bit more drivable. You know, things that you would actually want. You even have like a, a battery tender right here. So, you know, we can actually charge this thing and there's your battery right there. So it's a really well specced, very original car that has just a, t a couple of little touches to make it so much more drivable. Just simple things like we've got shields right here that were added by the previous owner because rocks can get kicked up from the wheels and hit the windshield through that hole right there. So this car was actually owned by a guy who owns a Superformance dealership and this was his personal car. So. That was another appealing thing to me is I felt like he took and spent a lot of time making sure that this car was gonna be better than average for some of these cars. So this car is just an exceptional example. It's even got the proper Avon tires, everything like that. So it's extraordinarily original and well, it's just absolutely ridiculous to drive. Speaking of driving, why don't we hop in and take this thing out for a spin and just, oh, it's so, so good sounding. Oh my God, it's just ridiculous. Let me tell you, getting in this thing, yeah, it's not easy. Here we go. This is in no way a car that you just like hop in and, you know, take for a quick spin. It's uh, It takes some effort. Put the key in, all right. Uh, we have all of our switches off. Up is off, down is on. All right, let's put in our seat belt, which it's a four-point harness, and put it on our steering wheel. <laughs> okay, so clutch in, tap the uh, gas pedal twice, and push, turn the key, turn the start button. Gonna turn on the fans, oily fan, cooling fan, just to get some air going. 
before we have to worry about it. And I'm going to turn on the AC. There we go. Okay. Kind of got to give it a little gas at first just because there's no choke. Let it warm up for a second. is left it up. By the way, the turning radius is proper race car. There's zero turning radius. So I have to actually do multiple turns just to make my driveway. So first gear is barely over to the left down. It's actually very difficult to get used to. Funny thing is the turn signals don't cancel. You actually have to cancel them yourself. Okay, right, here we go. ridiculous it's also kind of sensitive steering like it's it's like a closer ratio than you would expect for no power steering it's also got no sound deadening nothing so you hear everything in the road you hear everything in the engine that the engine's only a couple inches behind your head so you hear all the valve noise you hear everything about it it's to get some warmth in there. You can start letting it wake up a little. Turn on the oil cooler. here we'll just give them a second or two so they got you know we'll catch up pretty quick all right ready here we go
but you actually have handling and brakes and uh, it's just oh it's so amazing this is I, I have to admit I think this could be my favorite car I've ever driven it's just absurd in every way and I absolutely love it I can't even tell you how badly I love this car listen to that listen to that I can't even imagine what it must have been like in the 1960s to race one of these things. It would have been just crazy, absolutely crazy. I can tell you that driving it around in the short periods of time I've done it, your ears are ringing. Now you can't actually put it in the fifth gear and, okay, now I don't have to quite yell for you to hear me, but it's still not exactly quiet in this car by any means. Okay, here we go. this is hard work the steering is hard the brake is hard the accelerator is hard the clutch is hard everything takes effort and then to be doing it at the limits just oh my god it must have been brutal absolutely brutal going makes you feel alive it's crazy this is probably the most work to drive a car I've ever experienced in my life it just takes so much effort but I feel like I want to do this all day long of course with how little fuel economy I get you probably can only do it for a couple hours maybe and then you have to stop for gas probably you have to change your clothes too you can hear all that transmission noise. Good Lord. The gears are so tall. By the time you top out third gear, you're exceeding the speed limit anywhere in the world except Germany. exhausted. I want to do it again. Well YouTube, I hope you're excited to see some adventures in this car because I would like to take it on some drives and actually do some fun stuff with it. Take it to cars and coffee and all that sort of thing. And plus I just want to talk about the history of this car and things like that because well that sort of stuff's really fascinating to me. I love hearing about the 1966, 67, and 68, 69 Le Mans when these cars actually won it. Of course the Mark 1 
one in 68 and 69, the Mark II, one in 66 and 67. So this is the body design that one in 67 and 68, or 68 and 69. So we'll go into that sort of stuff and the history of this later in the video, but for now I'm just gonna stare at it and enjoy a beer and holy crap, I'm in love. I hope you guys are too. So like, share, and subscribe if you wanna see more of this, more stuff with Ferraris and supercars. Check out our website, normalguyssupercar.com, ngsupercars.com. We do appreciate your guys' support. Thank you so much for watching and subscribing. We'll see you in the next video. It's gonna be sweet.